so you're always chasing your shadow, you have this small woman that follows you around that wears green, and you just gave a girl a thimble. Well, in that case, you might just be Peter Pan. Hey guys, I'm Matthias Baikai, I'm Kai and Taylor back once again. And today, I want to explain how to animate or draw much, much faster. And this is going to be primarily about, like, color and coloring things in and, and doing uh, all of that kind of stuff. So, let's zoom in. So, you can see here, we have this nice little circle. It's animated. It's, not, it's nothing too crazy. It's just a kind of a fastball kind of going down. It's nothing, nothing crazy. Just any animation or any picture will do um so a lot of people what they do is they'll go ahead and they'll create a separate layer underneath their their line art so this will be their line art layer right so they'll have line art here and it'll just be the line art there won't be anything else there's no white color it's just transparent just with the line art on it itself right and then they'll have a background they'll have whatever you know and then they'll make a layer underneath their line art and on that layer they'll call this color and i've done this it works really really well for for portraits or for animation for, for portraits but for animations this it kind of falls in the to the wayside a little bit because animating two separate layers is a lot more tedious than animating one and i'll show you what i mean i'll explain so if i was to go ahead and use the second layer called color and i was to go ahead oh let me turn the anti thing on uh and i was to go ahead and uh animate sorry draw in this color here you see, oh, I'm drawing. Oh, it's nice. It's lovely. It's not too big of a deal. You know, I didn't. That didn't take that long. But now, imagine doing this for every frame you have because now what the problem is is now in the second frame this color has moved so now we can go ahead and either we can delete the entire thing and just recolor it all back in which is probably not what you want to do you probably want to go ahead and go to the next frame and then just use this move tool and then just move this down but you see the shape is not exactly the same so then we have to go ahead and you know erase that piece there but you can do this it it, it works like it, it's not really a, a problem to do like this it just takes a lot longer especially imagine you have a very long scene with a lot more complex shapes a lot more colors than just one it, it starts to build up and it starts making everything take a lot lot longer an easy way to fix this is instead of drawing on two separate layers you can do it all on one layer the thing that makes this take even shorter is let's get rid of this color layer here and let's go ahead and actually just fill in the color on our line art layer now i know what you're thinking there's probably gonna be gaps no because in in Krita, Krita, whatever you want to say, in in any program, most of them have a grow feature. So if you go to the uh, 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 the fill paint bucket tool tool bucket the uh, paint bucket thing, whatever you want to call it, I don't know the paint the giant thing that fills in all the paint. Um, you can go ahead and usually put the threshold or the um or the grow size up. So if I put the grow size a negative one here, you can see it, it kind of had this little gross white outline because it'll be like transparent around there, and we don't really want that because it looks pretty bad. So you can just bump the grow size up to either zero pixels or if you need it to be a little high, you can put it on one pixel. And then now you can see it doesn't kind of bleed in, you know. It, now it kind of just you know there's it looks nice, which is good. So now, instead of having to animate two different layers, you can just go through and then on each layer, you can just fill that in. Just, you know, hit the arrow key over and then just boom. So now it's looking good. Now you don't have to worry about animating two layers because it takes a lot longer to do. And I know, and I know in a lot of animes, they've done this in the past. And I've actually done this with portraits because it took a lot quicker. And I'll show you what I mean here. I actually drew this using this exact style. So basically, um, if you can see, if, if you see, if I, if I zoom in here, I actually took the anti-aliasing off of everything so that every, all the colors would fill really, really nicely. So basically I created this brush, right? Instead of having the brush have anti-aliasing on it, I took the anti-aliasing off. And now when I draw with it, it looks like this. So you can see that, oh, you can see that, um, you can see that it has that nice edge to it. So if I was to go ahead and fill in a specific color, you can see here, um, then if I wanted this center to be like yellow, I can go ahead and hit the little fill, fill tool and then go boom. Oh, uh, I got to change the tool options because it's on the wrong, uh, it's on the wrong, uh, it's on the wrong, it's on the wrong, uh, it's on the, there we go. Um, and I just turn anti-aliasing off and then boom, we're set to go. Turn the grow off as well. And now you can see that it just fills in perfectly. You have to turn the grow on if you want anti-aliasing because the edges that fade will kind of not really fade into each other properly. But if you turn anti-aliasing on your brush off, 
you don't have to worry about that because as you can see, if I have grow on, it kind of covers up some of the pixels, which you know you might not want. So if you turn that off and make sure you have no anti-aliasing, it fills in only the pixels that are not the red color. It fills in everything in between it, which looks really nice and looks really clean. And when you zoom out, you can't really see it. And keep in mind that this is an animation. When you take this, when you take these uh, files into your into your video editing program and you render them, um, it will actually render and it'll add anti-aliasing to all these lines so you won't even tell the difference. My recommendation to you is any brush you're using, I would turn anti-aliasing off and then I would go ahead and just draw in this super, super raw form. And then if you need to go ahead and add colors, it's super, super easy because you can literally change them on the fly. So let's say I wanted my skin to be green all of a sudden, I can just go ahead and go boop. And now my entire skin is green and there's no gaps. There's no, uh, of course, if you have these little pixels here, but um, I wouldn't worry about those too much. But like I said, um, the, the thing is, you can just easily just make changes on the fly. Oh, no, I don't want it to be green anymore. Now I want it to be blue. Okay, now I want it to be blue. And now my skin is completely blue. Absolutely beautiful. Wonderful. Great. But I would do this and I have been doing this on animations and it has been saving me a lot of time only having to animate one layer. Like I said, make sure you have your entire line art completely set though because you pr probably don't want to really change it after you add the color. But uh, once you have your line art completely done, just go ahead and add the color and then you're done. And it takes, it's a lot quicker. It's a method I've been using for a while. It's a method that I know a lot of studios use as well. It is very, very effective. So I hope you learned something new today. I hope to see you guys in the next video. But until then, bye-bye.